Hey, everybody, join the all new members area on my Before the Lights podcast website. The Salute Chin Chin Package includes access to the extra five, shout out on a future show, some bonus content. The Zoom calls are going to be starting again soon. Also, we're going to have some rewards for you. Get the brand new limited edition poker chip. It looks absolutely fantastic. You're going to get 10% off all merch as well. And BTL Crew Post, your name added to the show notes. To join for only $7.99 a month, go to beforethelightspod.com slash support. That's beforethelightspod.com slash support. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy Canale, and welcome back to Before the Lights Podcast, the show to find out how those in sports, music, and entertainment made their mark. Joining us today is a spokesperson, producer, model, actress, TV personality that has covered the Golden Globes along with being on the red carpet for the Catherine Zeta-Jones benefit. She has modeled in advertisements for AT&T, Venus Swimwear, Disney, and appeared in commercials for Coors Light, Old Navy, Kohl's, V8, and many others. She's the longest tenured and only model to appear on all three versions of Deal or No Deal, a Greek descent that has been in the entertainment business for over 30 years. She was listed in People's Magazine, 100 Most Beautiful People. Please welcome to the show, Patricia Cara. Patricia, how are you? I am great. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I'm going to take a stab at this. Uh Full name, Paniota Karamuzis? Very good. Uh, Nobody gets that. (laughs) Even the Greeks have a hard time with that. (laughs) I'm Italian, so, you know. (laughs) There you go. That's why. (laughs) When I say the word (laughs) Greece, what comes to mind? Beaches. Okay. (laughs) Beaches, wine, swimming, family. I'm just going to go on and on. Right, right. I got you. I'm missing Greece right now, so... um, (laughs) Well, you were born and raised in Chicago. I'm from central Illinois myself, so I can relate to the Illinois part. You went to St. Scholastic Academy, which is now closed. Yes, I heard. Yes, it is closed. And you then, you began your career in Chicago. What attracted you at an early age to the entertainment industry? Um. You know, I just, you look at magazines, you look at, you watch TV and you, you see certain people doing their thing. And, um, I always, since I was little, I mean, from the time I was four years old, I loved singing and dancing. And I was, you know, a little performer at a young age. Um, I can't sing to save my life. (laughs) Um, I could dance a little bit, but, um, yeah, I just started seeking it a little bit more, I'd have people say, oh, you should try, you know, modeling and acting. And so I started pursuing it by the time I was 15, 16. Um, I started looking into it more and started working and and then branched out. And uh, yeah, as they say, the rest is history. Correct. Got your bachelor's in performance arts from Columbia College in Chicago. Very good school for, for that kind of degree. When I, I didn't even get a degree. I went one year <laughs> got and, out. I started, and well, I started working in my field. So, uh, and I was traveling. So I'm like, Hmm, school, I, you know, it's a performing arts school and it was a great school. And, um, I loved it while I was there, but I, you know, I had the bug to, to travel and work. I mean, you're making money traveling. So it's right. like, hmm, I think I'm gonna go. What does your sister Joanna mean to you? Oh, everything. She has been um, a a constant in my life. She's the one. She helped my mom raise me. Um, So, you know, having an older sister guide me and be there and slap me back into reality if I went off track. Um, She kept me grounded. Definitely kept me grounded. Um, My mom didn't even want me to start working in the entertainment field. So my sister helped convince my mother uh, to allow me to get into it. And my sister promised that she would be there for me and help me and make sure I don't get out of line in any way. So the more important question then is Chicago, Greek town, Greek islands or Athena Greek restaurant. (laughs) Um, 
So I would have to probably say Greek islands. That was the last Greek restaurant I went to um, not too long ago, but back in the day, I, I, I didn't go to Greek islands. I would go to Santorini, Pegasus, Greek village, but now there aren't that many left standing, unfortunately. But um, yeah, Greek town in general is so awesome. It's great. You can't go wrong at any of the Greek restaurants there. You cannot. I agree. How did you get your break into modeling then at age 15, 16? Um, I hit the pavement. I opened up the yellow pages and started seeking um, agents and just knocked on every door and talked to everybody. And and once I got an agent, I started getting the auditions, started getting the jobs. Um, And then eventually I moved out of Chicago to Florida and then New York and here LA now for a while. Um, But the great thing is I get to go back and forth and work everywhere um, as much as I work here in LA. You mentioned New York. What did that teach you? Oh, everything. Um, (laughs) That was the best time in my life. Uh, Personally, professionally, I learned so much about myself and the business. All the chaos around me um, made me feel more peaceful. There was, I just had this more grounded, centered feeling there. And again, I learned a lot about the business because I started out modeling But then once I got to New York, it expanded to hosting and acting and I started branching out in all these other areas and entertainment. So, yeah, New York is my love. Um, I go back all the time. What was it like for you being part of spring break as a VJ at Lake Havasu (laughs) and Panama City Beach? Oh, my gosh, that's funny. Um, That was interesting and fun. (laughs) It was actually cool to you know, interview everybody um, while they're all partying and and enjoying themselves and being there, but not being completely part of it, just kind of on the outskirts, watching, looking in uh, and enjoying it. It was so much fun. Um, And everybody was definitely younger than me uh, when I was doing that, that show. Uh, But it was really cool. It was really fun to watch everybody do their thing and, and walk away like, I know what you guys were doing. <laughs> I've got it on video. Right. We have it on video for, to stay. <laughs> Patricia, what sacrifices have you had to make to be successful in Hollywood? Who sacrifices. Um, there are definitely things uh, that you have to, um, gosh, that's a tough, I haven't thought about that. Um, <laughs> You stumped me. Um, (laughs) You really did. I feel like you do sacrifice quite a bit. You have to be really disciplined. And and that's hard for me. I have to tell you, it is very hard for me to be disciplined. Come on, I'm a Greek from Chicago. I want to go enjoy and do. But um, there were times I did have to sacrifice spending time with my family, spending time with my friends, because I just was so driven and so into what I was doing. And there are a lot of naysayers. So you have to really like shut everything out and do your thing. Um, I would say family time and and, uh, friends from back home, but now full circle, I've been doing this for so long. I I have found that balance um, with everything as far, you know, you continuously try to find that balance, but I'm better at it now than I was back in the day. Did you then have to overcome doubts, fears, and crit- oh gosh, yeah. and critics telling you that you're never going to make it? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Constantly. Even to this day, you oh, hear still. people stay, say things and you just have to let it roll off your back and, and um, just disregard. It can't take it personally, really. Is And I, I talk to a lot of girls that are coming into this business and I'm always telling them, you know, you have to be secure with who you are. Um, especially when you're younger, when I came into it, I had people saying, you need to get your nose done. You need to get, you know, breast, breast enhancement. You need to do this. You're too skinny. You're too fat. I heard everything. Um, so you just have to trust your instincts and um, really know who you are and stand your ground and just have your goals in mind and just, you know, let everything else fall away and, and do, do you at the end of the day, just do your thing. Some of the TV appearances you've been in, in 2000, mad TV, 2002 to 2003 passions, 
2005, did Las Vegas and Young and Restless, and 2009, Days of Our Lives. In all the stuff you've done in TV, and there's more to that, what do you take as like a big accomplishment for you on the TV side of it? Um, I would say I, I, I was smiling when you were first saying it because that seems so long ago, a lot of those shows, um, and they're all great in their own way. And I've learned something from all of them, but I have to say deal or no deal was the, the most life changing for me. Um, sure. And again, I learned so much. I usually am on a job and it's a day here, a day there, a couple days, you know, on this job or that job. This ended up changing my world and changing my life in so many ways that, um, yeah, I'm forever grateful to Deal or No Deal. I love, And to this day, I mean, there's something that there is a connection with Deal or No Deal. I already forgot your question. I'm <laughs> That's just okay. going on and on. We're going we're gonna to get into all of Deal, deal or No <laughs> Deal in a minute. I did find this, though, and I, and I was curious. The 2001 Super Bowl commercial for Coors Light, I couldn't remember which one it was. I went back and found it and then I kind of, re- yeah, I kind of recalled it once I saw that. Did you know when you guys were filming this, that it was for the Super Bowl? I, I don't remember if I knew it was for Super Bowl. Uh, I think we were told afterwards. And um, honestly, back then I didn't understand or grasp what that meant or how big, obviously now I'm like, Oh, Super Bowl, that's a big deal. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it was pretty cool. I, and it's a funny commercial. Like it, it, it just makes me laugh every time I see that. So I, I wish they would bring it back. It's crazy to me that that was 20 years ago. It's, Nuts. Listeners, now that we've got your curiosity, I'll put a link in the show notes. You can go check out this Super Bowl commercial. It is pretty good. And also, just to kind of let you guys know, there's a lot more to her resume than deal or no deal in modeling. She's been in magazines such as Stuff, Maxim, Forbes, Sports Illustrated, Cosmopolitan, Glamour. The list goes on and on. And then in 2005, you were chosen to be a model for deal or no deal. How did you even hear about this show that was going to be brought to life? Um, One of my agents, uh, and oddly enough, it wasn't my modeling agent. I have a different agent for different things. It was my hosting agent who called me up and said, there's an audition for what we thought was a hosting job. Um, But they wouldn't tell us anything about it. So I went to the audition and I thought maybe it it was a model's reality show. And I'm like, oh, this isn't for me, but I'm here. Let me see. Let me stick it out. But they wouldn't tell us exactly what it is. And then when I got the call back, um, usually at a callback audition, there are less people. There were a hundred times more people at oh. this audition. They were seeing everybody. Um, and so I, again, I didn't know what it was up until I actually got the job and got to set. And they're like, it's a game show, Howie Mandel. And I think I, well, I am definitely one of the older girls. I was, I think I was the only one or one of the two that knew who Howie Mandel was. <laughs> um, so it, when I heard the girls were like, who? I'm like, wait, how old are you? Oh, got it. Got I'm like, it. the rubber glove, curly hair. And of course we see him and he, he has no hair now. And we're like, yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. And again, life-changing. Did you think it would become as popular as it did? No, not at all. I honestly was looking at it as another job. Um, It was a three day shoot and we did a bunch of shows in those three days and they were going to air it uh, December, 2005 on NBC. And I remember uh, the, the president of the production company said to me, get ready. This is going to change your life. He, And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, of course, everybody wants to believe their project is going to take off. I've heard that so many times. So I kind of brushed it off like, oh, you know, that would be great. It'd be nice if he's like, no, this is going to be really successful. He's like, trust me. And I just kept like, yeah, yeah, okay." (laughs) And then we got the call back um, in 2006 to to do more shows. And I mean, then it was just like everything flew by and it kept going and going. And yeah, it was a whirlwind. You had case number eight during premiere week, and they went to four, yes. five, 11, and then the case nine. Did you choose nine or was it assigned to you? It was assigned. The producer every morning um, before we would start would look at the stage, have all the models standing up there, and he would just kind of just 
start arranging. You should go here. You should go there. I don't know what the rhyme or reason was. I'm sure height played a role, hair color and coloring. So I, I'm sure that played into it. The height for sure. Cause all the, the girls that were like almost six feet tall were in the top row. Um, so yeah, he just, the first season I did change around a lot, but then he kept putting me back at nine and then nine stuck, uh, which I love because now I keep finding all these nine things in my life. It's really funny. And so it's become a, a big deal. I love being called number nine. Hey, nine. What I thought was kind of cool with that is, and it's coincidence when I was doing some research is the show was off the air for exactly nine years. Yes. And then you come back and, and you're number nine. It's, I talk about that all the time. Like that nine theme continuously comes back. So it was really cool. Nine years later, here we are on, and we actually stopped shooting 2009 Mm. uh, with everything, uh, the daytime version, the syndicated version and the nighttime version. Um, So it was kind of, again, that nine theme. I'll take it. So you've mentioned people have recognized you and instead of calling you Patricia, they call you Hey, number nine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I actually answer to it. I'm like, what? Yeah? What? <laughs> did, did you call me? Yeah. <laughs> what were some of the rigors of that job? I mean, I got to imagine one of them was being standing for a long period of time in, in what was it, four or five inch heels? Yeah, really tall heels. I didn't mind it. I love heels. Uh, now, mind you, 18 hour days, it Ooh. does hurt. But if you, a lot of the girls in between shows would take off their shoes and try to take a break. Biggest mistake. If you take them off, it's hard to put them back on. So I would just keep going all day and just collapse when I would get home. And just once I got to bed, just, it was, yeah, I, I, I think I did it the right way to get through it all. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the hard part. It, it is tiring, but then you get all the energy from the show uh, that you forget about it. I mean, w- once you're in it with the contestants and the audience members, and even on commercial breaks, we had a DJ, you would play music, the MC. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of forget about the pain of the heels and not getting any sleep. It, it's, it's not a bad deal. Where do <laughs> the models go after your case has been picked? So we go backstage Um, They had seats uh, arranged for us and a TV set in the back to continue watching the show as it's happening. Mm. And I have to tell you, we got yelled at a lot because we (laughs) would get so sucked into the game on watching it on TV backstage. They could hear us as the game was happening. We would be screaming, no, don't do that. No. Yeah. Take the deal. No, don't do it. So. Uh, yeah, we would continue watching the show and craft service was there. So we would be munching and hanging out, yelling at the TV set. Are, are, are there any horror stories when Howie would say, ladies, please, anybody trip, fall? Oh, yeah. A lot. I figured it had to happen. <laughs> um, it happened not often, but there were a few instances. Uh, and we did have, I think it was Miss America, um, one of the pageants, they had the ladies take our place and one of the girls, poor thing, she, it's hard if you're not used to it. I mean, we practice all the time, so we were used to it after a while, so we didn't have many mishaps, but um, the poor girl just Man. went down the stairs and it was pretty bad. And if, uh, if your case opens during the game at any point, they have to start the game all over again, whether the case opens or not. If it unbuckles, if it comes up, they have to start the game. They have to reshuffle all the cases. And whether you're winning or losing during the game, if that happens, they have to start all over. So it doesn't matter what that game was. It, so, And it actually happened on the reboot. I knocked down my case. Um, and it actually, the guy ended up doing better. <laughs> once, <laughs> so I'm like, you can thank me later. So you dropped your case. I did. Uh, the music was on and all of a sudden I was dancing a little bit and I, the ground, the, the floor was shaking the staircase and uh, it fell off my podium and opened. And yeah, I felt so bad, so bad. I'm like, I've been doing this for so long. I can't believe <laughs> that just happened now after all these years. But what was the most nervous time you ever had in opening a case? There, I, I can remember specifically um, the in the reboot and even the original when it, you're at the a crucial moment in the game 
you feel bad or you really feel for the contestant and you you feel like it's up to you to make it good or bad. And obviously we have no idea what's in our cases, um, but the nerves take over where you're starting to really shake because if it's a bad amount in your case, you could be screwing them. So um, definitely the nerves at that time um, during a lot of the games. But uh, I, I distinctly we remember two, two times where I was just shaking. Um, luckily it turned out okay. How much interaction do you guys have with Howie during the show or even before the show starts filming? Um, we see him like we would see him first thing in the morning, you know, our hellos, getting ready, hair, makeup. Um, he would come into our room. He gets his his hair and makeup done. <laughs> um, uh, they shine his head. Uh, so we, we would chat with him in the mornings and in between shows. Definitely. Um, so we get to interact with him quite a bit, even during lunch, dinner, you know, we get to interact in between takes. Um, and it, it's cool because he's always funny. He's constantly, he's so energetic. He, he kept us going. Nice. Along with Megan Abrigo, you were the only models to appear in all five seasons of the show and CNBC's 2018 revival. Did you have to reapply or did they contact you or how did that process go about getting back on the show? I actually had to re-audition for it, which uh, was crazy wow. considering I had done the two other shows, but I understood. I got it. And this time they branched out even more where they were uh, auditioning in New York, L.A. and Miami. Um, so I auditioned and uh, my first audition I felt comfortable and at ease. And then the callback, I actually got nervous. Uh, it was definitely, I don't know where that came from. And it, I, a couple of the people in the audition room were uh, the stylist and producer from our show, one of the producers, and I'm good friends with them. So it was kind of weird and odd, like I'm auditioning. And then they had cameras to do like the behind the scenes. Um, that's hard for me. I'm not a big fan of uh, you know, video being videotaped for auditions. It's one thing being on camera, like for the show, but um, that kind of made me, I, I don't know, again, I don't know where it came from nerves hit when they hit and it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I had to audition and I was so glad to hear I got the job. <laughs> With Howie's schedule and he's doing so much these days, do you oh think, gosh, the, yeah. do you think the show will ever come back again or you think it's done? <sighs> I'm hopeful. Uh, I, I really, it's, I get asked that question every single day. Um, who knows, maybe, but which I'll be 99 and still <laughs> like, are we going to do a deal again? Um, I want case yeah, nine. I'm hopeful. I noticed I said 99, <laughs> um, but I'm hopeful because it's such a, they have channels dedicated to deal or no deal on Amazon prime on Peacock and a, a few other ones I've heard. So it's still a popular show. People think we're still shooting. They have no idea that a lot of those are reruns. Wow. People actually ask me every day also, how do you get on the show to be a contestant? I want to win the big money. And I'm like, oh, we're not shooting anymore. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I hope, I hope they bring it back because it is a family show. It's something everybody can watch together from kids to grandparents. Um, and it just, you forget about everything else going on in your life. You, you're just enjoying and screaming at the TV or screaming in the audience. Um, it's such a fun show. It's a great show. Along with Tamika Jacobs, you were an assistance for the syndicated version of the show from 2008 to 2010. If I remember correctly, Patricia, didn't that version run a little bit different than what we saw on yes. TV? And how was it different? Um, Thank you for asking that. Nobody realizes it's very different. The, the daytime version. Um, we, instead of a million dollars, you could win half a million. And uh, there were 22 cases. And instead of the models holding the cases, there were contestants holding the cases. So Tamika and I would, uh, there was a spinning wheel and there was a ball. She would throw the ball into the spinning wheel. I would spin the, the wheel. She would throw the ball in and whatever number, it, it was kind of like roulette. Whatever number it landed on, that was a contestant that would play. And the shows were half hour shows instead of an hour. So it would just quickly, and it was five days a week, um, airing in the mornings, I think like 11 o'clock, depending on where you were at. Um, so a little different, uh, you know, still with big money, not as much as the prime time, uh, less 
of the models, which some people loved, some people hated. A lot of people were like, we're the models. I'm like, it's a different kind of show. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Thank God there's still prime time. I thought you were going to say whatever case it landed on was eliminated and whatever case was left at the end, won whatever money no, was in their case. That would be an interesting one, actually. That would take a very long time. <laughs> but Just keep spinning that, the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here for you guys. I'm spinning. Last case <laughs> standing wins whatever's inside the case. <laughs> In 2007, you appeared on Ellen and Oprah, two iconic interviewers and daytime hosts for somebody like myself and you as a, as a TV personality. What was that like for you? Oh my gosh, that was so cool. Especially doing the, I mean, they were all equally great, but it was great to go back home to Chicago to be on Oprah. Um, Cause then I got to hang out with my family and friends. So I loved every part of that, but really, I mean, yeah, it was we were at such a high at that time. The show was just a phenomenon. So to be on all those shows was incredible. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I have no words, honestly. It's a moment in time I will never forget. Uh, great memories. I'm sure my listeners are not going to even know this even existed, but it, it does and it did. In 2009, the Game Show Awards... You guys won the favorite TV game show models for that year. Yeah. Realize how many models there are on game shows. I really didn't. I mean, Price is Right. I definitely remember that. Um, and there were a couple of other shows I had no idea. And I don't remember who we were. I know Price is Right was one of the shows we were up against. Um, but yeah, we ended up winning, which was really cool. Um, yeah, not many people knew about that. I think I actually have it on my YouTube channel. It was a fun little skit we did with Howie. Um, I think like five or six of us were at the award show accepting the award. Uh, and it was cool because I got to see a lot of people from other shows. Uh, oh, that's that fun. I, I was a little starstruck. I, I got to meet Meatloaf. He was there. <laughs> Nothing to do with game shows, but he was there. Um, Richard Karn was there from home improvements and we've actually become friends. I've, I've gone to his charity event, his golf event. Um, I think who else was there, but it was just, I was literally, I was just like, Oh my gosh, I, I, just people watching and taking it all in and just enjoying every moment and soaking it in. You had mentioned a couple of <laughs> times how deal or no deal has it changed your life. What did deal or no deal then lead to for you? It opened up a lot of doors um, for, on the hosting side, especially modeling as well, but hosting too. So I got to, because of Deal or No Deal, I started doing things on Extra uh, as a guest host. Uh, we did stuff to promote our show, but then they actually had me go interview people at press junkets or red carpets. So I got to do uh, some of that. And then Fox Movie Channel they have their red carpet interviews. So I got to do that. So in a lot of other different things, um, which for me was great because I love hosting. So it opened up a lot of doors that way. And I'm sure there are many more things that aren't even coming to mind, but it definitely played a role because now people knew who we were from the show that people would call you in to either hire you without having to audition or at least call you in for an audition. Um, and then uh, personally, too, I've made lifelong friends. I'm friends with the producers. I'm, I'm friends with the Silas, the makeup people, the, the other models. They're some of my closest friends where we invite each other to weddings, birthdays, uh, shower parties, kids' birthdays, all the above. So it's really neat to have that. Uh, it's, it's a great crew of people. They, they're my other family. They're, they're my family home away from home. Have you ever thought about hosting your own game show? Hell yes. <laughs> I actually was talking about it yesterday. Um, it's funny because I actually um, did something where I was Howie. We played Deal or No Deal at, uh, at this college. They would bring me up every so often to do stuff with the students and do a, a version of Deal or No Deal. And I played Howie. And the students were the contestants and they won prizes. So I would do it just like Howie. Um, I loved it because, you know, I've been to every game that I knew the moments that he would say certain things and from ladies, please to deal or no deal or, you know, and just all the little things he says and does and the way his mannerisms, I would pull it off doing it for the college. And then uh, yesterday I was actually talking about, I, I came up with a music show idea um, 
So I want to pitch that. And there are definitely other shows that I've pitched to, to host. And uh, so who knows, maybe one of them will end up, you know, that'd be awesome. Catching on, And yeah, that would be incredible. That deal or no deal. When it was at its peak, when you said you had done a version, I have done a few versions in bars in Illinois <laughs> where they had the owners, you know, tucked behind or outside in the alley or whatever, calling me on my cell phone when we had prizes to give away. So it definitely had, you know, trickle down effect and there's something there somewhere, a play for that. So I wish you the best there. And maybe someday I'll turn on the TV and I'll say hosted by Patricia Kerr. And I'm like, Hey, I, know. I love it. <laughs> I actually do it some uh, on, um, WGN radio with Anna DeVlantis. I, I call in and we'll play a game with the listeners and they'll win prizes. And we do a little mini version of deal or no deal over the uh, phone on the radio. So it's, it's pretty fun. I love doing that stuff to me. I, you know, it's just very unique uh, to have that in my life. Tell us about your experience in 2009 on the trace Atkins music video, Mary for money. <laughs> I love that video. It is so funny. If you, it, for those who haven't seen the video, you need to see it. It's hysterical. Trace Adkins is awesome. Loved him. Loved working with him. We had a lot of fun, um, but really funny video. I, I, I love that part of my job where I get to do fun, cool, different, interesting things. Um, that was a great shoot. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well, listeners. Thank you. That's awesome. In 2012, you did a workout video with several deal or no deal models called Fast Fitness. How yes. did that all come about? <laughs> somebody approached me, somebody I'd been talking to approached me about doing a fitness video. Um, so I helped produce that and I brought on two of the other girls, Alike, who was number 21 and Pilar, who was number 14. And I asked them, you know, I, I hung out with them quite a bit where I got to know them. I'm like, Hey, what do you guys think about doing a fitness video? So we did the beginners, intermediate and advanced. Um, of course I was, I think I was probably the beginners. <laughs> I did that version. <laughs> um, maybe intermediate, but either way, not the advanced. Um, but yeah, somebody approached us. Then I brought everybody together, even brought our stylist from deal or no deal since she knows us very well. And she dressed us for it. We shot it. Um, and it's been fun. I actually, I still have a bunch of videos that I end up sending for charity events, you know, for auction stuff with signed pictures. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it was a great thing. It was great. Cause I got to work with two of the girls I'm friends with and, um, and the, the stylist and actually even, uh, the makeup people. So it was a great, great shoot. Can't complain. What was hit music central USA? Like, cause that seemed like it had to be a lot of fun too. another good project. That was, um, I worked with, uh, gosh, what's his name? Brighton. I think his name is Brighton. He was on the young and the restless for a long time. So we got to co-host it in, I mean, it's great. You're, you're listening to music and introducing the artists and interviewing people. And I got to introduce, uh, who was, I forgot her name. She, uh, she was in the um, Grammys that year and I can't remember her name. She was a Chicago girl mm. and um, she was winning awards. She had a great personality, great singer. So that to me is, I love that. I mean, it's a great, great opportunity to have those moments. What I think is really cool is you have some workshops for young women on how to get started in the business secrets to a successful you. How often prior to putting this project together, were you being asked when you just finally said, bing, I'm going to do something. I I've been asked for a long time, even before deal or no deal, I would have people come to me, especially people that knew me from back home growing up. And they knew somebody that was trying to get their daughter or their son into the uh, business. So I thought about it for a long time, but then once deal or no deal came around, I got approached even more and not just by people I knew, uh, you know, especially now with social media, I get DMS all the time of how do I get, started where do I go what do I do so uh started putting the workshops together and I actually have been working on a book for a long time I'm not a writer so it's been really tough I have all these notes and I'm pulling it together and I've actually been working on it for a long time but I do consultations with uh people to help them and guide them through and talk them through the steps um to get to where they want to go and hopefully not make some of the mistakes I made uh, who knows, but hopefully, hopefully I'm helping in some way. 
Are you still doing the web series dish with Trish? No, I actually stopped it for a little while. Uh, um, my mom got sick, so I took a break from it. And I've actually been thinking about that a lot to bring it back. Dish with Trish always revolved around food. I yeah. love dishing with people and bringing them to different restaurants. And I'm definitely a big foodie. Um, but I think that there's a lifestyle show around that. So I'm considering doing something with that, whether it's a show or a podcast or I don't know. I'm I, I'm in between what I want to do with it and not just food. It could be more. I love to cook. I'm a foodie myself. And I, I've said I love to eat. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can't cook to save my life. <laughs> I've said for a while what's missing is is a show, a cooking show. And maybe it revolves around different restaurants that brings young culinary kids into the mix because we, we don't have it. We see, we don't, we see what people have already accomplished, but we don't see the next generation coming through. That's a so, great idea. Use I, it. I may do something with that. <laughs> You've been involved in many charity organizations. People make a wish. Elizabeth Grazer, pediatric AIDS foundation, salvation army, the American heart association read across America, the tiger woods foundation and the Dennis Quaid foundation. Where does this thirst to want to help so many people and be involved in so many charity organizations come from? You actually just reminded me, a Read Across America is coming up again, and I actually need to call them back. So thank you for the reminder. <laughs> you are welcome. Because <laughs> um, they're doing, so usually it's in March, it's uh, with Dr. Seuss Day, but they're, they're doing something in the fall. And I, I just love being around kids. I'm a big kid myself. Um, in general, I love helping people, period. Uh, but I have a soft spot for children and, um, you know, I, I remember what it was like being a kid and you look up to certain people and you learn from others. And so, um, you bring all that together. Um, I love helping in any way I can. Um, you can never do enough. I should say I can never, in general, you can never do enough, but I honestly can never do enough. Um, so I'm always looking at those opportunities uh, um, to help anybody at any time. I thought it was fantastic when I saw all that on your, on your list. I'm like, this is really cool that she's got so much going on and takes time to give back to all these different organizations. There's a, there's a bunch say, of them. Thank you. But being on, on the show, I think opened that to where you learn more about mm -hmm. different event, events, charities to help. Uh, there are a lot of them. I wouldn't have known had it not been once we were on the show, people approach you and you get approached left and right. And again, I'm, I'm learning about all these charities and I'm like, of course I want to help. Of course. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so I'm grateful for those opportunities. Deal open that up to me as well. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot that I would have heard about as anyway, but through the show and people knowing that I'm on there will approach and ask you to be part of it. And of course, I'm always happy to be a part of it and help in any way. You've represented several companies such as Time Life, Disney, Princess Cruise Lines, Toyota, and others. What does it mean to have your name, Patricia, aligned with companies that have that kind of reputation? It's honestly an honor. Like these are the things when you're younger and you hear about all these different companies and then to be able to work with these people um, who would have thought when you're a kid, you don't foresee those moments, but to be in it and working side by side with a lot of these people and these big companies, um, it's honestly I an honor and I, I love it. And hopefully it'll continue uh, for as long as it, I can to be doing this. Next projects. Is there a project that's not released that you're working on called Dream On Now Deliver? Yes, that's what I've been, and I'm actually debating whether to rename it. Okay. Um, but Dream On Now Deliver, uh, yes, definitely. That's part of all the workshop stuff that I was talking about in the book, um, which I've been calling it Showbiz Wiz now. Okay. But Dream On Now Deliver is part of that. So that's part you of the book. Dream and then you got to deliver. Correct. <laughs> And right. actually, Dream On Now Deliver are the initials of D-O-N-D, -D, Deal or No Deal. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Didn't that's even catch that. That's how I came that. up with it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes back to the show. All goes back to Deal or I'm No Deal. <laughs> Where can listeners follow you? Um, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, my handle is at Patricia Cara, K-A-R-A. -A. 
Uh, I do have a YouTube channel, which is the Patricia Kara. Um, Facebook, my page there is Patricia Kara Dish with Trish. Everything else, if you look up Patricia Kara, you'll find me. I'm all over the place on some sort of, but Instagram and Twitter, I, I love, um, and Facebook. PatriciaCara.com also is the website. Yes. You can oh, go yeah. there and oh, get, about that. and you can go there and get autographed copies from Patricia. And there's all kinds of links on the website as well. So you got to, you got to promote the website. I totally, it's so funny. I get caught up with the social media stuff that I told, this is the first time I've not mentioned my website. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, yes, everybody, PatriciaCara.com. I can see why you use Patricia Care because Paniota Kara Muzis. <laughs> that, that can get lost in transition. So it, it's easier to That'll remember. That would be a tough one for people. They'd, they'd be like, hey, you. Yeah. Until the dealer know you. Hey, number nine. Hey, number nine. Everything would have yeah, been number so nine. so much easier. <laughs> Patricia, thanks for taking time and coming on the show. This has been fun. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Folks, if you would go to anywhere you follow the podcast and rate and review the show. Five stars, nice comments are always appreciated. And follow me on Instagram at Before the Lights podcast. Thank you for listening to Before the Lights. I'm Tommy Canale. And until next time, everybody, I salute a chin chin. Bye.